Check, check. What is up y'all, welcome back. It's been a minute since we talked about new beauty releases and I feel like this year so far, we have been doing this like, waiting for things to start coming out and we are now in the season where all the brands are putting stuff out. And we've got all kinds of actual beauty news happening. So I call my chatting about new beauty releases videos tepid takes videos because I tend to buy most things. And that's because I keep an encyclopedic collection so that I can like do swatch videos and things like that like I did in my last video. By the way, the comments, it just went up today and already the comments are just so overwhelmingly positive and appreciative. And I just have to remind myself that y'all always appreciate when we get in the weeds. Like, I'm like, they want to be entertained. It's like, no, y'all want spreadsheets. <laughs> Like the entertainment is like secondary to the details and I need to just remember that like I'm always like no one's gonna be excited about that and y'all love the nitty-gritty. Y'all love it. Either way, as all these things are being released, a lot of them have wet my appetite for new beauty and we're going to chat about it. So we're gonna open up trend mood and we're going to we're going to chat about it. So let's go ahead and jump in. Okie dokie, we are working in reverse chronological order, starting with this post. Today is today is May 26th. I don't know why this is the most recent. Oh, it's pinned. They must have paid to pin it. Ooh, Thrive Cosmetics. So if y'all don't know my history with Thrive Cosmetics, I basically accidentally founded my channel on their mascara. <laughs> it was like my first review I ever did in 2018 was on the Thrive Cosmetics mascara. I have never looked back. It is still my favorite mascara, their tubing mascara. Then they put out a brown, just like further solidifying my commitment to sparkle motion. And now they have come out with a new mascara. I was at a fitness event the Friday of the eclipse. I just really needed to surround myself with people that I love. And I, I did, I ended up, you know, having a really, really fantastic time in the city. But I was at this fitness event, 305 Fitness with Carissa that was hosted by Thrive. And she was talking about this mascara coming out. She, you know, kind of spilled the beans early. And she was like, we have so many people who like really love our mascara, but we have just as many people who freaking hate our mascara. <laughs> And she's like, so we're putting out another mascara so that the people who hate our mascara can find something that they love. And so this is the new Liquid Lash Volumizer Mascara. The other one is called the Liquid Lash Extensions Mascara. And I'm only a little bit critical, y'all. I did make a video because I am so close to the brand a while ago called like, if I were creative director of Thrive Cosmetics. And Carissa is like amazing at just kind of like hearing different, you know, points of view and things like that. Like no one was angry with me, right? But if I had two criticisms for this release, one is that the tube is the same color as the other tube. So I'm, I mean, it's a different shape, but it'd be really cool if it had been silver with turquoise on it so we could tell them apart. Same way they do it like the drugstore with like waterproof versus non-waterproof. So I'm not like, you know, looking really closely at it. And also I wish that the name was just slightly different. <laughs> Liquid Lash Volumizer. Liquid Lash Extensions makes sense because it is lash extensions. So you're saying it's a liquid version of lash extensions, but there's no such thing as a lash volumizer that you need a liquid version of, right? And so I, I get it. It's probably for indexing purposes or for, you know, the algorithm or whatever, but to me, they're too similar. That's just my own personal take. Either way, highly anticipated new mascara from Thrive Cosmetics. You've probably heard about their viral liquid lash extensions mascara. Now they're dropping a new volumizing one. Don't like tubing mascaras? This one's for you. So yeah, I mean, I've been on their PR list since the beginning of time. I love them and we have grown as brands together essentially. And so yeah, I will be trying this whenever it comes in the mail, but it says individually coats and separates each lash evenly, delivers bold volume without clumping, flaking or smudging. I'm curious if they're going to have a brown in it or if it's just black for now. They always do a really good job of putting like skincare ingredients in there, or in this case, like lash care <laughs> ingredients in there. So I do find that, you know, their tubing mascara is really nourishing for my eyelashes too. I'm definitely gonna be trying this. I'm not gonna have to buy it, but I'm definitely gonna try it for y'all. Laneige is coming out with a new lip sleeping mask, intense hydration with vitamin C. Are they all, I think that they're probably all intense hydration. I don't think that they make like a, a lip sleeping mask. I don't know. It doesn't say intense hydration on there. Either way, like I love this stuff. And so the fact that they made a pink lemonade that is like cute as hack looking. That's just like a fun thing. Like if I run out of this or if I just, you know, I'm on a whim and I'm like, oh, I'm looking at Sephora or whatever, like maybe I'll pick it up. Seems pretty cool. I'm a fan of the Laneige Lip Sleeping Mask. I think that it works really well. Sounds awesome. I like that smell. I like the smell of lemon. So these are the new shades in the Dior Rosy Glow, Dior Backstage Rosy Glow blushes. And I have the two that already existed before this. I have 001 pink and 004 coral. And I love them both dearly. I think that they're fantastic for me. I do think that they're a little bit, you know, pale. They probably won't work on everybody kind of thing. And that's why I was excited 
when I first saw the sketches for this. So this has been kind of something that like has been teased quite a bit and we've been getting these leaked iterations of the process through Trend Mood and through other kind of beauty news accounts for weeks now. And the drawings initially and like the names I think that were applied to them, I was like, this is exciting because they look like they're gonna be really like rich and deep and give options because it's a cool formula. It has like this much of like a pH adjuster in it. And so I feel like it does actually properly adapt to people's skin tones and things like that. Like it just has a tiny, tiny bit of it. It's not going hot pink. You do actually get the true blush color, but you also get this kind of like transformative, like warmth effect. And I'm assuming that, you know, they're keeping the same formula, just expanding the shade range. That was exciting to me. And I think I commented on it on Trend Mood. I was like, yes, looks like they're gonna be deeper. Looks like we're gonna have some diversity, fantastic. And also the colors just seem really interesting, okay? Then, I should scoot, huh? I should scoot over. <laughs> I'm a professional. Then the second post came out that was showing them in the lab and they looked really pale and ashy. And then I completely reversed my viewpoint. I was like, this is stupid. If they're just gonna put out different colors, but there's not gonna be any kind of inclusivity to it, then what's the point? Well, I am happy to say that it really looks like three out of four of these or possibly all of them have actually in their true iteration, their final form, they look a really accommodating for deep skin tones and like pretty exciting in their richness. So there is a brown, a plum, a really bright coral, and then more of a desaturated peach color, peachy pink, and I am excited about them. I don't think I'm going to run out and buy the deeper ones, maybe the purple. I kind of am just like curious about it. Like it'll probably look terrible on me, but like I'm curious nonetheless. But that bottom left one, that's like really beautifully like soft, pinky, peach. Yep, I like that. And I do think that the bottom right one is very much trying to be 004 coral for deeper skin tones because it's just more saturated and less ashy. So I can't wait to see it on other people. I can't wait to see someone like Coco Swatches use it or like Nima Tang or something and like really see what it looks like because they look promising and I, I've already really liked the formula, so I'm excited about these. Berry, cherry, rosewood, and mahogany. So I think rosewood is the one that I would pick up. Charlotte Tilbury. I'm sorry, I am contractually obligated to say it that way. New Magic Hydrator Mist. Radiant Skin Rescue Essence Revitalizing Anti-Hydration Oxygenating Skin Energizer. I feel like we're not, we haven't picked whether we're talking in adjectives or nouns here. Radiant Skin, that's just a thing, that's a noun. Rescue Essence, that's also a noun. Revitalizing, that's an adjective. And hydration, that's a noun. Oxygenating skin, that's just like a action and then a subject, right? And then energizer, which is a noun. Smoother, younger looking skin. Ha! <laughs> It's scrambling the eggs in my brain. <laughs> I understand that there are many English vernaculars, but that one is just really doing a number on me. Okay, so A, I am kind of on the PR list for Charlotte Tilbury, but for their skincare. So maybe this will come. I'll have to see, but like, and maybe I'll email them. They're like, they're really responsive on email. But the thing, the thing that kind of bugs me about this is like Charlotte Tilbury charges so much for her stuff. It doesn't say what the price is going to be, but I guarantee you it's going to be $10 more than you think it's going to be. It's probably going to be like $48 or something. And you're like, why, you know? So yeah, Magic Hydrator Mist. Why does it look like it just came off of the drugstore shelf? It really, the packaging is giving roll on. <laughs> <laughs> it's giving icy hot. It's giving like roll on like muscle relief stuff that already comes in a box where the branding actually lives. And then this is like the, nah, no one really cares what it looks like because it's on the inside of the box kind of thing. Once you get it home, who cares? It's giving Tiger Balm. Like there's just, it's honestly less interesting than Tiger Balm. It's like aggressively analog looking. And like, it's, I just don't understand who's doing their graphic design because I don't feel like on the list of things that they want to convey in their graphic design, luxury is even in the building. Luxury. The word I said was luxury, but it came out luxury. Yeah, I don't think luxury was even in the building. We'll see. Okay, here's something I already bought because <laughs> it came out yesterday and these are available now. Soft Pop Plumping Blush Veil from Makeup by Mario. I don't know if the original Soft Sculpt Transforming Skin Enhancer, which is what these look like they're a blush version of, ever claimed to be plumping. It says all over warming complexion tint, tint, tint. Uh, yeah, plumping, that's, that's a whole new layer. I'm really not sure what uh, that would feel. I mean, I wonder if like, it's just got hyaluronic acid in it or something, or if like, they're really gonna make your cheeks tingle. Cause like, 
that's weird. I'm not against it, but it's weird. Yeah, I went ahead and got my OTP, right? The pale, beautiful desaturated pink and the kind of pop of peachy coral. And we're going to test them and it's gonna be fun and you'll better watch it. I hope I can package it in a way that's very enticing for you. But yeah, I think that these are the kinds of very straight down in the middle of what I'm interested in releases that I have been waiting for. Things that feel like no-brainers, you know, when I buy them. Ew, this is just like, okay. I feel like there's become this genre when I do these videos that is just me getting excited about something that's clear lip gloss adjacent. <laughs> like, I'll do the same spiel I always do. In these videos, a lot of times, tepid takes being the fact that I am, you know, probably going to buy most things. There are things that are on a different plane of desire, right? There's like, I'm interested in that because makeup is my hyperfixation and I wanna know. Like, I just wanna know, be able to compare it and give y'all the truth. But then there's the, the stuff that I would own were I a makeup hobbyist just solely that I want for my own collection. And I cannot be stopped on translucent lip glosses. And I recently discovered, you know, something somebody, everybody else has known about for a long time, but the Clarins Comfort Lip Oil. I like the, I like the little orange one. That was the one that I tried. And it's just, I love the whole experience of it, okay? I like the package. I like the giant doe foot. I like the smell of it. I like the color of it. It's just a sexy lip oil and it actually works. Whereas like, I bought this one for probably around the same price from Gisu. And like, I use it because I'm, oh, that's the thing. I can always get through a clear lip oil product, clear lip gloss product. So it's not that big of like a problem if I own a lot of them because even if I don't love them, I'm still gonna use them kind of thing. And the Tom Ford one still hasn't come out yet. I think I check like every two days or something. I'm like, where is that rose lip oil from the last step it takes? But I bought this because I don't know, someone on one of Kyla Fish's videos like recommended it and it just tastes like fry oil. It's like they couldn't have bothered to put a scent in it or like make it not taste like fry oil. I don't know, it's not my thing. But I could absolutely get excited about getting another one of these Clarins lip oils and this one is now in the new shade Fig. And that is maybe, oh my God, y'all. I hadn't scrolled over. I'm making my life difficult because now I have to put in the scroll images on here. It's just like, People think that like being an influencer is just like putting on makeup and looking cute and like buying stuff. It's like, it's mostly inserting images into Final Cut Pro <laughs> and then putting like, like taking backgrounds out and putting little transitions in one right after the other. Good God, it's tedious. So anyway, that's what we have to do in these videos. They're very easy to film, really obnoxious to edit. But these are some of the worst swatching photos. Like I would have just left them out because a, they're clearly like, they're so copy pasted looking and so like airbrushed looking. They look like somebody took a picture out of the page of a magazine. That's what it looks like. But also like that is not the color that it is. I can tell you right now, it's more of like a translucent kind of like neutral cranberry color. It is not that like cool purple that they have on, right? Either way, it might make me go to the Clarins listing and just buy a different one because that's how my brain works. But yeah, I mean, it's a beautiful formula if that's a color that excites you. Although the color, I might need to review it just because the color remains a mystery because that what's on that page is just not helpful. Not helpful at all. I wonder what the comments say. The marketing photo and lip swatch photo look like two different colors. Swatch photos of these are all worse than no photo at all, to be, to be honest. I'm no scientist, but even my tiny brain knows a sheer purple lip will look different on a black woman than it does on a white woman. Please be serious, Mr. Claren. <laughs> Y'all say it better than I can. Dislike the edited swatch images. The shine pattern on the applicator is the same on all of them. Can they not afford to take real photos? Yeah, yep. So I think I might just review this just so that we can compare my lips to the white girl's lips in these swatch photos just for the sake of finding the truth on important hard hitting things like a Clarins lip gloss. All right, now we've got New liquid lip and blush from Valentino. Liquid Rosso, two in one. You can use them on the lips and cheeks. P.S. You can use pretty much anything on the lips and cheeks. That's just how that is. But yeah, these are blushes that the shades look pretty on the nose. So we've got like a bright pink, a bright orange, and then we get into like two reds and kind of a, I don't know, a brick a bricky color. This is interesting because we were just talking about in a recent video how, maybe it was the last video, I don't remember. A lot of times brands that have business daddies that are like, you know, putting stuff out at Sephora, they'll be told a lot of times like the colors that they need to put out. It's like, you need to put out a peach, peachy coral, a rose, a berry, a like nudie tan, and then like a, I don't know, something like a deeper, I don't know. 
something like that. This doesn't seem to obey those laws at all because Valentino is, you know, more independently owned. Not more independently owned, but not owned by like the Sephora incubator. So anyway, I think that these are weird choices. I think it's interesting that there's an orange and the orange might be the only one that I would be interested in out of all of them, but I don't know if I'm interested in them at all because I just don't think I could wear any of those shades. And to be honest, they look like they're going to be really accommodating for deeper, like medium and deeper skin tones, which is great for Valentino to be doing. That's great for any uber luxury brand, makeup brand to be doing because they're just, I to put it delicately, they're not known for it, okay? <laughs> so we love to see it. We love to see Dior, hopefully those, those translate. And uh, this does look like these are colors that, you know, Jackie, I could wear like fantastic it's not for me and it's for somebody else sounds cool she shakes her bracelets in excitement net -a porte has put a placeholder page someone just kind of you know unearthed this and it got posted here for a mark jacobs beauty page to be coming soon. It says, coming soon, discover new arrivals here when they're available from Marc Jacobs Beauty. Uh, beauty to me is the, in the unexpected. It's what surprises you, says Marc Jacobs, reflecting the eclectic sensibility of his ready to wear. The designer's beauty range includes highly pigmented eyeshadows, award-winning lip glosses and foundations that deliver full flawless coverage in a single application. Is this a mistake? Is this a mistake? And this is just the pre-existing landing page from the last time that Marc Jacobs was making makeup because if y'all don't know, Marc Jacobs had a really, a pretty okay beauty line. People really liked the eyeshadow packets. Packets? The word is palette. The word is palette. Yeah, people liked the eyeshadow palettes. I think I had one at one point, but I might be just Mandela affecting that, you know? It's kind of like Rocky Horror Muppet Show. Like, who knows? Who knows? But I'm down. I like the Marc Jacobs aesthetic, kind of. Me and Simbri went into the Marc Jacobs store in Soho a couple of weekends ago. We had just gone into Farm Rio and we were like, let's go in there. Yeah. Oh boy. There's nothing in this entire store, just the Soho store specifically, that does not have the Marc Jacobs branding emblazoned across it as the design decision. You are wearing the label. You're not just wearing the label, you're wearing the name of the product. It says like the tote bag, Marc Jacobs, whatever. And I get it. I get that, you know, driving it hard on branding, but I'm talking like the earrings have it, the shoes have it, the sunglasses have it, the scarves. I mean, you can't escape it. It's like you either like it or you don't, and I don't. So I, I mean, I have liked Marc Jacobs' stuff in the past. One of my favorite bags that I own, I have this beautiful backpack that I bought way back in the day that I still travel with. It's uh, Marc by Marc Jacobs, love it. But I'll be interested to see if this comes to fruition, what we're gonna be dealing with because I feel like the brand has done some, has made some strange choices lately. <laughs> what is that? Okay. I do appreciate Super Goop, I do. They are putting out these SPF hydrating their lipsticks. And I will say Super Goop is the brand that managed to make a pretty okay SPF eyeshadow. That's not an easy task. Not a lot of people are like super pumped to just be putting SPF right on their eyes, but they were beautiful. I don't remember what happened to them, whether they still exist or not, but these are, you know, bona fide lipsticks. Like these definitely have pigment to them. They look like something that you might get from Glossier maybe, you know, but they're, they're committed colors. And am I a fan of these colors? Not really. They look, three of them look the same. And then one of them is like, they say warm terracotta. I beg to differ. I think that that is coral. Oh, it's hundred percent mineral SPF. You know, you need to have pigment in there in order to get the physical barrier to call it a sunscreen. That's pretty cool. I would say that the only one that I would go for would be High Five because it is that coral color. All the rest of them are a little extreme and y'all know I'm just not a lipstick girly to begin with. It's rare that I like covet a lipstick, but I think that these are cool and I'm glad I just wanted to make sure that it was mineral because if you've ever had, and boy do they really exist a lot of places on the internet and on the market, if you've ever had a lip color that is an SPF lip color that uses a chemical SPF, it tastes awful. It is so rare that you find one that's actually like a functional lip balm that doesn't taste like crap and it also has a functional amount of SPF in it. Like the LH Cosmetics ones have SPF in them but it's SPF 15 which is better than nothing but like SPF 30 is better. <laughs> I would like to see them come out with some like more nuanced colors though. They're like all red. So this might be one of my 
favorite ways that I found out about these things. You know, these things come across my plate either through following Trend Mood or because my friends repost them on their stories and Tom, my friend Hope Miss Tom, wouldn't be a khaki video without invoking Hope Miss Tom, posted these Tarte Maracuja Juicy Shift, the 2023 pH powered plump gloss balm. I'm guessing that these are like the larger release. They're like hard launching these now that, you know, are the Maracuja plumping lip balms, but they are in a shift formula, which means that they're super pH reactive. And Tom put this on their stories and just said, I would like to be let off the simulation, please. <laughs> The fact that you can no longer repost someone's story is a crime, okay? And if anyone knows how, you just let me know. But the reason that I think they wanted to be let off the simulation is because we are talking about 10 shades here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it might be nine. Nine shades that are all calling themselves something different, but with very, very few exceptions, you see the color of the actual product in the tube on one side of the swatch, and then as it transitions it gradients over to the other side of the swatch where it's like this is what it's going to look like when it ph reacts to your lips shocking absolutely no one and making no history in the year of our lord 2023 they all look the same they're all the same color of pink because that's what ph reactors do you could argue that some of these are like slightly altered by the fact that they have a different base pigment and maybe they have more or less of the ph reactor in it but it's giving that winky looks video from way back in the day where tati bought all the winky looks ph changing lip balms and then as she's applying them, she's just becoming more and more and more dismayed, realizing that she paid for all of them and they all are actually the same color. That's what this is. And this is just an example of what happens when you put too darn much of that stuff in there and it just becomes a gimmick. You might as well just have one. I'm done wearing my glasses. I've seen enough. Dear diary. Ooh, uh, some Tom Ford stuff that I'm not gonna buy. Fantastic. Soleil de Fou collection. By the way, as a self-appointed bimbo, I am just going to keep pronouncing things wrong on purpose because I can't pronounce them right to begin with. So Soleil de Fou. It's not barba papa. It's still kind of funny. So anyway, this is Soleil de Fou Glow Highlighter, Spark Lip Balm, and Color Quad Eyeshadow Palette in Island Haze and Tropical Dusk. And also these are those uber shimmery lipsticks that tend to go crunch, crunch, crunch. Now I did just get in PR and we're going to do a video on a bunch more stuff from Uma. I got these and it actually goes with this look. I'm kind of a little all over yellow right now. These are the Black Magic lipsticks and they do have that same kind of glittery thing on the outside. Hey oh, they're beautiful, right? But they don't have a ton of it on the inside and I have been wearing these quite comfortably and not having any issues with crunch crunch. So, you know, if you wanna go pay probably like $300 for a Tom Ford lipstick, that's an exaggeration. They're only like $299. If that's your thing, then absolutely. I'm still holding out for that freaking Tom Ford rose clear lip oil, okay? I'm more excited about that. Moving right along. Okay, my friend Natalie of my skin trust has been on top of this so much lately and also like asking me, she's like, I know this is a long shot, but do you know when the new Chanel stuff is dropping in the United States? Because it's like apparently available in Europe and just no one knows where to get it here. So sneak peek fall 2023, apparently. This is Les Symboles. That's not how you say that. De Chanel Oversized Illuminating Face Powder in shades Warm Gold, Pearly White, and Precious Coral. I don't think I want that. I don't like illuminating powders, but it's still unique and exciting. But they also are coming out with this thing that I swear to God, y'all, it just looks like a giant tub of Becca Under Eye Corrector. This is the Beauty Pie one, but still, like it just looks like a big tub of that. They just showed the model like swiping it under a skin and it's just like, eh, this is a cream thing, you know? It's supposed to be like the Healthy Glow bronzing cream, but they're just calling it like a healthy glow cream. And you're like, would you, I, I get it that like everybody's trying to be disruptive and break new ground on like what counts as makeup and like new ideas of it's not just a blush or it's not just a bronzer, it's an enhancer, you know, that kind of thing. But like Chanel knows that I'm going to be too curious about it. And then I'm going to buy it just to figure out what it is. <laughs> and they're right. And I feel manipulated, but I also know that they're right. So anyway, whenever anybody catches wind of that, y'all let me know. Sunshine Star Liz is a follower of mine. A, I don't like follower. She's a subscriber, a viewer of mine. And she is always the first one to send me a DM when something like hits a website in the US. She's like, this is available. And that's how I like knew about the Armani blushes before they sold out. Like she's amazing. So 
Sunshine Star Liz. Love you. Appreciate you. That lip color is kind of everything. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, we have the new blush stick shade from Persona Cosmetics. The shade is called Bloom, and I actually just got this. I just got it in the mail. So I didn't know that this was a collab. It's a collab between Sarah Wallach and Persona, and it is. It's just a cute color. We'll put it in a video soon. I'll try it soon. Ah, here we go. I feel like I've already discussed this only because I watched Tom discuss this, and I just kind of had an out-of-body experience because watching Tom's entire mood change when they talk about Pat McGrath, if you're one of those people who used to be a diehard collector of Pat McGrath, then you're probably also one of those people who is like living in this like really frustrated state of like watching the fall of the brand right now because they have. They've just really stopped innovating. They've stopped being ahead of the curve. They've stopped putting out things that are like surprising and new and trend setting and now it just this really like if you would have just done like this you know what I mean I'm just looking at it like that I would say ColourPop yeah guess what it's not ColourPop priced not whatsoever so this is the your blushes a new divine blush contour balm collection these do look like some of them might be pretty colors but I am just so unimpressed with the ideas coming out of Pat McGrath lately. I do feel like I kind of got on the Pat McGrath train late. And when I did get on, I was like, this is amazing. And by then some people were already becoming disillusioned with the brand. Tom comes to mind, Monica Bell comes to mind. Monica Bell has made several short form videos on Instagram about both Stickergate, she's the one who broke Stickergate, and also selling her entire collection because she just does feel so disillusioned by the brand. I have to say, nothing about this interests me. Nothing about this interests me. I, as much as I think that like, it would be something that might perform okay on my channel, I can't get it up for this release. Let's put it that way. And knowing that my friends are so, like people who used to be so diehard for the brand are so disappointed by it, also just kind of like, it just makes me sad. I don't know. I mean, I'm not gonna say I'm never gonna buy something from Pat McGrath again because I do still love a lot of her stuff, but like this is a really uninspiring collection. Kimchi, that is hilarious. That is like the most unwearable palette I've ever seen in my life. What is that? New Cherry Chic collection. Cherry Chic palette, 01 Sex Kitten, Cherry Chic lip gloss in Puthy Cat because Kimchi has a lisp and we love to see it. Yeah, this palette is a Christmas nightmare. I am obsessed with it in concept. I wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot pole. It is radioactive and it is repellent to me. <laughs> Moving right along. Melt Cosmetics, that's a beautiful Melt Cosmetics palette. That is really, really beautiful, but I don't like their formula. I just don't like their eyeshadow formula. It's it's just like fallouty and like too blendy and like, I don't know, I owned two or three of their palettes. And I do find that their palettes like almost always skew too dark for my skin. Like that's just a personal thing. You know, it's not even a criticism. It's just like, I'm not gonna invest my money in it because like I'm not gonna be able to dig my way out of that palette. Like I'm only gonna be able to use like one shade at a time. There it is. There's that weird Chanel thing. Le Beige Healthy Glow Cream in Rosy Beige, summer 2023, coming soon on their website and retailers. Yeah, I don't know what that's supposed to be. I don't get it, but I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it, I'm gonna explain it to you. <laughs> Cause that's my job. I've been staring at the edge of the water. Okay, we have a couple of ambient lighting palettes that have come out in these very satisfyingly like coffee tone palette colors from Hourglass. And you know what? If I wasn't gonna buy it, which I came close to buying, but if I wasn't gonna buy it in that beautiful packaging with like the elephants all over it or the tigers or whatever, I'm not gonna buy it now. Plus they just sent me one and it's fine. I like it, it's fine, it's not my favorite thing. I already own all of the NARS Afterglow Liquid Blushes. I will have a deep dive on that coming up for y'all pretty soon. I've decided that I have my thoughts together on the performance of the product and it's like use cases and everything, like, you know, my review as it were. But I think that also it's important to swatch each shade against the relevant comparisons in my collection as well, which is going to be, what? in the weeds, I think that y'all are really gonna like it. So look forward to that. Clinique by Kate Spade. I was like, Kate Spade's got their own makeup? Clinique by Kate Spade. If that's not a match made in 1998 heaven, I don't know what is. <laughs> that's the most obvious collab that like, I honestly like would have already thought it existed. Maybe it does. Maybe this is just, you know, another one. I ended up giving Black Honey to my friend Leslie when she was here. You know, Clinique does not have a chokehold on me. I have enjoyed the fact that they I don't know, are at least featuring a little bit more kind of like diversity, 
not a ton, but like they put Trevor Barrett on there. They still got a ton of flack from all the old biddies being like, men aren't supposed to wear makeup. And it's just like, <sighs> I feel like we ha have so much to cover. <laughs> if you think men aren't supposed to wear makeup, like I've got some really bad news for you, lady. <laughs> like, we're past that. <laughs> anyway, yeah, I'm not gonna be picking up the Kate Spade Clinique collab. Okay, 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 okay. Maybe one of the worst mistakes that someone has made in a long time, and I really hate that it was my girl Danessa Myricks because this is bad. This is bad. This is like, in terms of being a creator criticizing new releases, this one's a layup, right? <laughs> I'm not gonna make it any worse than it is, but I'll just tell you the fact. Donessa Myricks is putting out a new shade of her Infinite Chrome Flakes. The Infinite Chrome Flakes are the ones that you see going viral all the time, the Nikki tutorials. It's like you put on a black lipstick and you put the Infinite Chrome Flakes on top and it's just like this mind-blowing, blinding, gorgeous, you know, unicorn skin texture. I've owned them. They dry up really fast. Either way. And this one is in the shades of the, I think it's just the shift has something to do with bisexual pride. But like A, we're gonna thread the needle and say, not you gays, not you straights, not you general queers, not you they thems, not you transgender anybody. No, no, just the bi. Just the bi pride. Okay. It's like, I can't personally be offended, but it's just such a weird choice. <laughs> like, like what? And then I get this voice memo from Tom after Tom was frankly livid about this because they were really getting dead ass serious about the fact that in 2023, you don't get to just put out a product during Pride Month and be like, yay, buy Pride. Like you need to care. People's lives are at risk. This is a huge problem, a huge, huge, scary, scary problem if you actually care about the community. Then after that video had gone up, the critical sass that Tom did, I get this voice memo from them like I probably got it in the morning or something it probably like was late at night and they said I just found out that Danessa Myricks is giving five percent five percent of the sales of the Bi Pride multi-chrome flakes to you know some kind of like LGBTQ organization five percent that's just insult just don't do it you know what I mean like just don't do it in the first place it's such a bad move it's just such a bad move I mean since then we've had Target pulling things out of stores because they got threats and like I think that that was also a bad move for them but this is still a bad move I told Thomas that I raised more than that on my fundraiser for my birthday <laughs> yeah oh I want to read the comments here I hope they're donating too otherwise it's just another game money cash grab five percent. Okay, this has been popping up on my feed here and there, not even on my feed. It's like when I go to look at blushes to like, you know, pull links or images or whatever for other videos because that last one was like entirely on blushes. This has been popping up in like the, you know, product listing ads at the top of the Google results. And it is the new Hermes blushes and they look really beautiful for fair skin. Yep, that was all one sentence. They look really beautiful for fair skin. They didn't even bother to put them on a, oh, they did bother to put them on a deep skin model. I would be willing to bet that they don't really look like that. It just doesn't, I don't think that that's an authentic, that, mm -mm. I think that's been doctored. Looking at these shades, they are just too pale. Now, do I like them? Yes, I do. Do I like them $83 amount? I don't like them $83 amount because even if they were like life-changing, the fact that there are three shades that if you squint, they all look the same and they're $83, I'm not gonna get on camera and be like, yep, go buy them. And if I say don't buy them, you'll probably be like, I already knew that. <laughs> so even though, you know, it's all an investment for my channel and I can make an excuse to buy just about anything, Hermes just has not impressed me quite yet. And I did buy their foundation when it came out last year and it really did, it did the opposite of impressing me. So they are at negative points with me right now. $83, who do you think you are? Hermes, that's who we think we are. Guess what, Hermes? Still no, the answer is still no. Ooh, okay, someone did ask me about this and I literally have not given it the time of day to even learn what it is. The new Dyson Air straight. I mean, I'm not really desperate to get my hair super straight anyway. If I were a hairstylist, this might be different because, you know, obviously you're working with a lot of different hair types, but like my, my hair barely exists right now. The last thing I want to do is flatten it. <laughs> I am holding it together with hope and hairspray right now. Not, not trying to flatten everything out, but this says, oh, not a wet to dry straightener. Not that. <laughs> not that Dyson. No. Use a fast 
stream of air to dry it in the style. Styling with airflow rather than hot plates requires less high heat and protects natural shine. It has three modes, wet, dry, and cool mode. You know, if anybody can do it, Dyson can do it, but I'm still not sure that they can do it, you know? Should I buy it? Because it's funny. It's at least funny. I don't know, it's probably $9 million. It's 500, same div. Let me know. Aha, I believe that this is where we will end this because I wanted to make sure I got to this. This is the new Bare Minerals Gen Nude Blonzer, Blush and Bronzer, Kiss of Mauve, Kiss of Spice. I'm so very excited about these. I love being on the Bare Minerals PR list because sometimes they send me really boring eyeshadows, like really like the most boring eyeshadow palettes you've ever seen. Sometimes they send me exquisite, beautiful skincare. And then every once in a while, they actually come out with a new product. And it's something like this where they're just like, you know, for a couple years, y'all have really liked this one product. I don't know on a couple more shades like that's their vibe they're in no hurry to try and impress us they're not trying to steal the show they're just like we know if we drop a couple more of those gen nude blonzers y'all probably think that's pretty cool right like i like that approach because they're right i want both of these and since i am on their pr list i am stoked because i will probably get both of these the thing about kiss of pink kiss of copper kiss of rose they're all quite 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 pigmented and i was able to work with them and i really enjoyed them but i think i will enjoy this even more i think that my tastes have changed in the sense of blushes i want to be able to like it's not so much that i my tastes have changed in the way i want them to look it's that my tastes have changed in that, that i want to build them more slowly like i just want more options and more time and that kiss of mauve looks right accommodating doesn't it <laughs> doesn't it and the other one is weird it's like kind of gold you know like i'm wondering how that's gonna look on my skin it's almost like this lip color but it's got a little a little too much yellow in it but like it doesn't mean that i am you know not peaked in terms of curiosity so that is what we shall be doing and that my loves is where we meet back up with i believe the last time that we were doing this kind of video i enjoy doing these kinds of videos because honestly i'm seeing most of this at the same time that you are for the first time. It's my chance to review new beauty releases and you get to see it in real time. So thank you for being here. I really appreciate you so much. If this is your first time to my channel and you enjoyed this, I do these, you know, every few weeks or so. Tune in for that, subscribe so that you don't miss them. And if you enjoyed this, please do give it a thumbs up because that lets the algorithm know that other people should watch this video too. The beauty community is having a really hard time on YouTube right now, y'all. YouTube has very much forgotten us. There are almost no growing beauty creators that are like in the you know million subscriber bracket anymore and so it's us kind of smaller creators i feel like who are trying to hold it down and youtube is just not circulating our content so the likes help now more than ever and i appreciate y'all just appreciate you so anyway i'll put a video up here that i think you're going to enjoy if you liked this one and uh i love y'all so much and i will hopefully see you in the next one bye